know the sermon title which the Lord gave me is when people leave, blessings come. Amen. Come on, say when people leave, when people leave, or let's say this when people go, blessings come. Because quite often we think there are people whom we trust most, and we think, oh, these guys are so crucial to my life. And I want to tell you, when people leave, we think they take the blessings away. All right? But I want to tell you this morning, if you truly believe in God, this word is for you. When people leave, blessings come. See, let's look at this bottle. Even though this is a new bottle, all right? I like this coffee. So even though this is a new bottle, all right? This bottle is not going to be useful as far as the lid is going to be closed tight. Only if the lid is lifted up, whatever is there inside will be used, right? If the lid is still on top, wow, it's a great bottle, the lid looks fantastic. But the lid is stopping this coffee powder from being used, all the purpose it was created for. Dear children of God, quite often we have people as lids in our life who are stopping us from fulfilling the purpose and plan which God has got for us. We think these lids are protecting us, these lids are covering us, but actually these lids, these caps are stopping the blessing which God is giving in our life. It's stopping our potential. It's not making us move out. But today the Lord is saying, I'm removing these lids, these lids so that you will come out and be used for God's glory. Amen? Because I tell you, these lids enjoy being on top. They enjoy being on top. Because we are always under them. Alright? But I want to tell you, the Lord's going to remove certain lids from our house. They're going to remove certain caps from our life in order for us to be blessed. How many of you guys say Amen? Hallelujah. When people go, blessings, do you like it? Do you like it now? Let's go into the book of Genesis chapter 13. Verse from 5 onwards. Lot was traveling with Abraham. He had also become wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and many tents. But the land could not support Abraham and Lot. They were living together. It could not support their flocks and herds living together. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abraham and Lot. Now understand very clearly, there was no dispute between Abraham and Lot. The dispute was between his people and Lord's people. Now for all those people who live as joint families, I want to tell you, right, I know you love your people, you want to live as joint families, but the word of God clearly says, you get married, bugger, you get out of the house. Okay? You get married, leave your mother, father, go live separately because you need to build your house. Most of the problems which a husband and wife has is because of Lord's problem, have a problem with Abraham's people. Abraham's people, the fight is between Abraham's people and Lot's people. Not between Abraham and Lot. A lot of counseling which I, you know, give for people, the husband and wife, actually they don't have a problem. It's because this mother and father does not like what's happening with the son-in-law, the daughter-in-law, and they have a problem and because of that, the problem is transferred into them. Mothers and fathers, even if you hate me, I know you love your children, but get them married, kick them out of the house. All right, joint family does not work. God says, let them go build their own family. My wife was saying, you were preaching all of this, you're advising, I'm waiting till your daughter gets married. <laughs> Only one daughter, we will see what you do. But then there's no other way. Now there are people who ask me questions. If the father and mother becomes old, are we not supposed to take care of them? You will take care of them, but then they will come and live under your roof. Because when you get married, you become the head of the family. You are supposed to listen from God and then run your family. You are not supposed to listen from your parents, my parents, his brother, his sister and love the family. You will always rely on God to run the family. Amen. So parents who got married, children, if you're upset with me, this is God's word. It's not me. All right? Now, they have a problem. Problem one. These guys, they should have known the earth, can, the land which they are staying together cannot contain them. They're going to have a problem for space. Second problem, if these guys are going to fight in front of Canaanites, they will lose their testimony. All right? Imagine a lot of times we as believers, we fight over you know, some silly stuff and lose our testimony in front of believers. There are, there are times I've heard now non-believers saying, these guys are Christians when they go to church and they're fighting amongst each other. They were losing the testimony. So Abraham decided, boss, let's not have this fight and lose our testimony. It's better for us to split. My first point for today. Have confidence in God. Rather having confidence in the place. Alright? I'll tell you, your confidence should be on God and not on the place. Abraham tells Lot, Genesis chapter 13 verse 8 and 9. Finally, Abraham said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives, man. The whole country is open to you. He says, take your choice of any section of the land you want. You know what? We will separate. If you want to go to the land, if you want to go to the land of the left, I will go to to the land on the right. If you want to go to the land on the right, I will go to the 
this why is like crazy man imagine if it was us we will like i want this i want that you go there this guy is like you go anywhere you want man i am not confident about the place but i am confident about the god who is coming me you go there i will take this land i go there you take any land you want you take man i am i don't have a problem with the place right i can lose the place but the lord who is with me will bless me wherever i go amen hallelujah your confidence is not about the place because abram being the senior guy he could have taken the opportunity he said boss i am senior over you lot give me the first choice i will make a choice no this guy said boss wherever you want to go you go i am not bothered about the place i am confident about the lord wherever i go i go to the right or i go to the left i am so confident wherever i go the lord will bless me amen hallelujah this morning dear children of god you need to be confident about god who is coming with you and not about the place you go hallelujah wherever you go you need to teach your children this as well boss it's not about the place it's about the presence of god amen i heard the story where uh, where, the, where there were two siblings the bigger brother and the young brother small boys and there was a, a pizza piece left the younger brother was fighting so much he said this piece this piece belongs to me and the elder brother gave it all right and the mom asked and came and asked the brother why how can you give it man didn't you want that piece did you like it he said i liked it and my brother wanted it so i gave it what about you he said my brother does not know about our father i know my father has a full pizza for me it's all about giving just one piece for my brother if you really know your father you will not be worried about that one piece of pizza you will like boss take that one piece my father has an entire pizza he in fact will open an entire pizza shop for me and feed me continuously <laughs> hallelujah come on put your hands together for the lord and say this is what it is oh second point do not succumb to what you see have faith in what you don't all right we all know this verse you know we walk by sight we walk by faith and not by sight but the problem with this always it's all about sight don't succumb to what you see quite often there's always this constant battle between sight and faith right constant battle between what we see and what we need to believe because what we see what's in front of us convinces us oh this is the truth this is the fact this is practical and this is nice what we see is nice that's what happened with lot lot as soon as abram said this this guy jumped okay lot was right the he jumped okay verse 13 10 says lot took a long look at the fertile plains of the jordan valley everything is fertile man looking to good the whole area was well watered everywhere like the garden of the lord or the beautiful land of egypt this guy fell into the lust of eyes he looks at everything like wow man this is nice for a not even a moment he thinked about or thought about asking you know abram for a suggestion abram uncle abram you are the senior guy why didn't you or why didn't you make the choice or uncle can you tell me which land to choose as soon as you get a chance all right the children know till they grow up they are like daddy should i wear this mummy should i wear this when you marry you don't ask us anything but otherwise till then you are like given a chance people want to jump but then when when you do this please don't go by appearance by what you see today i want to tell you let's let's look at the difference between how godly people and worldly people make choices when somebody wants a place look at how the worldly person makes a choice he's like when i when i choose a place is there i do i get a better lifestyle will i get a better salary um is better scenery better 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 access bigger car i don't know uh, are there malls would there be theaters and most importantly for people when they choose a place are there restaurants all right because always it's about will i get this food that food and always this is how people make a choice but then when godly people make a choice you need to be you need to be very careful about the spiritual impact of the people around you What is the spiritual atmosphere of the place I'm going to choose? Will I have a good church around the place I choose? Will my kids, will my, will my, will my children have a good children, a good kids church? Is there a word-based spiritual church where I'm going? Our choices need to be based on spiritual, godly advice. Because quite often we watch the movies, we watch the songs, we look at the videos in YouTube and like, wow, that's the place where the water and the honey is running. every time oh my god america australia netherlands uk you go to uk people kill you for a watch do you know 
Now you're advised not to wear some costly watches when you walk on the road in UK because people, let's, they just steal the watches. They even kill you. If they're on drugs, they kill you for the watch. Right? At least in India, you're alive. Don't worry. Sight. Oh my God. Today, just people are bothered about, you know, how you, how you just make this instead. Because um, I think you know, somewhere, three days back, I was having a meeting. One, one sister wanted to take a picture. Like, I was posing for the picture. And like, Pastor, very, very sorry. I forgot to switch on the filter. I was thinking, if you switch on the filter, will my hair grow? <laughs> Don't make decisions on what you see. I was having a question and answer session with the youngsters and like, Pastor, how do we make choices? Especially when you're young, how do we choose a partner? I said, boss, especially when you're young, you know, even when you look at a chimpanzee, chimpanzee is very cute when it's a baby. You'll have to allow the chimpanzee to grow and only then you understand it's a chimpanzee. All right, when you make decisions at an early age, when you look at all the chimpanzees, around, oh, wow, very cute. You can cuddle, but then let the chimpanzee grow. Right? Don't make choices by what you see. I still remember, you know, Lydia and I, when I got married, our daughter still says, no, you better hide the wedding picture. Don't show your wedding picture, you know, because you guys, you know, I don't want to explain. So the people who went and told Lydia, Lydia, you know what, the guy whom you're marrying, he doesn't look good at all. All right? And they were telling me as well, the girl you're getting married, oh, she's not a good match, she doesn't look good, not great personality and all of that, boss. Now it's 21 years of marriage, everybody looks and like, this pastor has a very beautiful wife, amen, and Lydia has a very handsome husband. Come on, you need to clap hands. <laughs> but, then, but then you look at a wedding picture, if you had to make choices on her appearance, we both would have gotten, not got married at all. All right, a lot of people who are married, you go back and see the wedding pictures, yeah, my God, we look horrible. <laughs> We better know, right? <laughs> Thank God. You should see some wedding pictures of the husband wearing those ties. The tie is just here. <laughs> Who forced you to wear the tie, man? And you look at all the makeup artists' pictures, you know, Instagram accounts, I like, this is how the girl was. They want to show that they're doing a great job. But again, you need to also consider the people, right? They are like, they post for all this makeup artist picture photos and their videos like, oh, this is how I look. But boss, when they look at the original face, you should know, but please be very careful when you make decisions based on sight. Do not make decisions based on what you see. That was, that was where Lot's fall started. He looked around, he saw everything was well watered, fertile lands. It looks like the land of the land of God, garden of God. So let me just go, take it up. Boss, my God has the power to make the wilderness into the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. I will not see and decide. I will have faith and decide. That's what God wants to do in your life, man. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of the things which we cannot see at all. Through the faith, people in the days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. But what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. What you now see. Right? When we started church, we had just three people. Right? And I was telling you, I will be sitting in an auditorium. We will have a lot of people. Last week when people came and yet we had about 2,000 people having lunch with us. Amen. From three, I did not see all your faces, man, when we started church. You never saw my face. I don't know. But then I did not see all your faces. I never knew you will walk into church today or the last week. But then faith is all about the Lord's going to make this 2,000, 20,000. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever we walk, that's what the Lord is going to make. And we're going to have innumerable souls. Hallelujah. And we will see all those souls which we did not see at all. So it's not about walking in sight. My third one. I like this. Can okay, I say I like this? Don't be focused on going to a place that is blessed. But believe God to bless every place you go. Amen. Come on, say loud. Amen. Don't be focused on going to a place which is blessed. All right. You think, oh, this particular, no, everybody sends me this, you know, in uh, recent times, people know how to market the best cities in the next five years, all right? The top cities, you know, I, I, read, uh, I read a proper research document last week. For 2033, 
the fastest growing cities in the world top 10 fastest growing cities in the world and the top four cities in the top 10 do you know where they are do you know where they are by 2023 these will be the top cities in the world do you know where they are top four cities india the first city they're saying is bangalore the fifth city is hyderabad Sixth is Bombay, Delhi, four cities. Chennai, of course, is not there. But then our belief is, if we are in Chennai, this will become the top city because we guys are here in Chennai. Amen. That should be a faith. Don't look at this data. Pastor, Bangalore is going to be the number one city. Let me move to Bangalore. By the time you go to Bangalore and settle down, another picture will come and say, Chennai is going to be the next top city. Look at this guy, Abraham. I was like wondering, why does God like him so much? Why is God so... This guy says, a lot, a lot. The whole countryside is open before you, man. Take a choice of any section of the land you want. He's like, take any land you want. Right? And then he says, we will separate. If you want the land to the left, I will take the land to the right. If you want the land on the right, I will go to the left. If it was us, you know, you know what we would have said, told Lot, Lot, give me six months to pray. I will pray and tell you which land God wants me to take and wants you to take. Or after six months, this guy will care. Now give me another six months because I'm going to pastor Reno Kumar. He's traveling always, so during the week time I'm not able to meet him, but definitely I want to make sure within the six months I will meet him. He will pray for a lot. He will take lots and suggest a place. This guy had so much of confidence in God. He said, boss, the Lord is always with me. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Whichever land you want to take, take this, take this, take this, take this, take anything you want, man. I'm not bothered. I'm not confident about the place, but I'm confident about the Lord who's there with me. He says, boss, you know what? Wherever I go, the Lord's going to bless it. And today morning, I want to tell you, guys, don't fight for properties within your siblings, man. All right? Don't, don't fight for properties. It's ugly. You're like, pastor, do you know what? You will say all of this. I will tell you, don't fight. You know, in one of the neighborhoods we had a few years back, we had two brothers, amazing brothers. Wow, what brothers, all right? They were loving so much. The father died, man. The father died and I was like, what brothers? Because they were like, they were willing to go to any extent to kill each other to get the property, man. And after one brother got the other property, he was like, and still he was scribbling, I am, I am not at peace because I know the other brother has done witchcraft for this house. Why the fight? Because even after you fought and you've got the property, you're not at peace. Right? Look at Abraham, man. You want this property, take it, man. You are like, I'm the firstborn. I need the first floor. You are the secondborn. Take the terrace. So many people come and say, Pastor, you know what? My siblings are... Let them have it. It's okay. Let them have it. What you're letting go is very small. But when you let go, God's going to about to give you something very, very big. So let them have it, man. Your confidence is not in the place. Not worrying about the place honors God. Not worrying about the place. Not worrying about properties and assets honors God. You guys know my story. I shared it some time back. You know, I have about eight step siblings. All my step siblings did not want to give me a piece of my father's property. My father had great property. And my mom said, Reno, you will not ask any of this property. You don't want all at all. You don't need it at all. Give up. You don't have to ask your step brothers or sisters about the property. You don't need it at all. I want to tell you today, I'm more blessed. I have so many souls. This is the biggest, biggest blessing I have God. And now I want to tell you, you guys are all my brothers and sisters. All your properties are my properties. <laughs> Just let go, man. Just let go. Don't fight for the property. God tells Joshua, Joshua 1, 3. Hey, this is what I told Moses. I'm telling this to you as well. Wherever you go set foot, you know what? I will give you that land. Joshua 1 9, he says, Be strong, be courageous, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. The Lord is with you wherever you go. And that's the most important promise I want. Imagine I go to a place, I like the place, I have the place, but the Lord is not there. That's what happened to Lot. He took a place, fertile, wonderful. He dis did business with Sodom and Gomorrah. All crazy, man. That's Las Vegas, that's Bombay. Lord was not there. Give up those places, man. Don't be fighting. It's okay. I wrote this. The world tells us that blessed and successful people come from 
blessed and successful families. But the Bible tells us, blessed people make every place they set foot a blessing. Let me repeat this for you. The world tells us that blessed people or successful people come from successful backgrounds and successful families. That's what the world tells us. Oh, you know what? You know what family he comes from? He comes from this family, man. He comes from that family. Do you know who is grandfather? I don't have great respect for such people. You know why? Because they have not accomplished anything on their own. You don't live in your grandfather's glory, man. But if you are called by God, you are set up by God, you are a person who is blessed, wherever you set foot, that place will become a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Wherever you set foot. We want to live in this father's legacy. Not the world's father's legacy, man. I want to... My fourth point today. Your decision might appear foolish to the world, but it's okay. Come on, you tell, tell your neighbor, it's okay. It might appear foolish to the world. Because Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, a lot more distance to Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham was moving from place to place. He could not settle in one place because he had a lot of cattle. He needed pastors. He had to move from place to place. And wherever we moved, the Canaanites also had their own houses. So this guy could not settle in a place. He was moving from place to place. And somebody would have told Abraham, Abraham, you made a foolish decision. You should have chosen those plains and not allowed Lot. Abraham was already hurting. Man, this guy, Lot, whom I loved so much, he made the choice, he's left. All right? And Abraham's now hurting. And people would have said, you made a foolish decision, man. You should have held on to that place. You shouldn't have given. Especially after we give up, we have these people coming. You, know, you acted like a fool, man. And like, God, no, ask you to be like a serpent also. That's what the Bible says. Be, you know, was calm as a dove, but wise as a serpent. You should have been a servant. People come and tell you, you made the wrong decision. You chose the wrong job. You chose the wrong place. You chose the desert, man. Right? You chose ministry over money. Right? You gave up all the money, you gave up your worldly job, chose ministry, man. People come and tell me, why did you choose Bihar? Just three years when I was in Dubai, like, there were so many people who came in with me, Pastor, there's a huge following for you in Dubai. Why didn't you start a church in Dubai? I said, boss, there are already so many churches in Dubai, boss. Let me go to places where there are no churches. They're like, Pastor, Bihar, I, want to, I don't want to go to Dubai and fight for those souls which are already being fought for. I want to go to Bihar and make Bihar the next to Dubai in India. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we want to do. Right? And that's where people might call you a fool. It's okay. People still call me a fool for leaving Australia and coming back. They're like, everybody goes to Australia to get their PR. While you were about to get the PR, you came to uh, left Australia. And like, after all places, do you have to come to Chennai, boss? See what's happening in Chennai. People call me a fool, you made the wrong decision. You shouldn't have gone to Hyderabad because you don't know the language, Telugu. That's where God will work, man. I don't know the language, I don't know the people. But I go there because God asked me to go there. It might appear foolish, man. But that's man. the Lord is going to give us a mega church in Hyderabad. You guys believe uh, Hyderabad is going to be a turning point for us. It might appear foolish. It was faith by faith that Abel brought more acceptable offering to God than Cain. And you know what? For Cain it was foolish. Cain thought, Abraham, are you a fool, man? You give all the best to God, it's all burnt. I am very wise. Right? I will give only the leftovers. Dear children of God, when you give the best for the Lord, it might appear foolish. But you know, the Lord will prove who the fool actually is. I want to finish this. Last point. When people go, blessings come. When people go, I'll tell you why. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. The word of God, this is how it starts. After Lot had gone. Come on, say, after Lot had gone. If you know somebody next to you, place your hands and say, after Lot had gone. Come on, say, after Lot had gone. Louder, after Lot had gone. I'll tell you why. The word of God says, after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abraham. What did he say? Come on, guy, look as far as you can see in every direction. North, south, east, west. Right? And then he said, as far as you can see, to you and your descendants, that will become your permanent person after Lot had gone. 
right? God's like, after Lot had gone, God says, I'm going to do this to you, man. When was this? After? After? Lot had. If it was me, oh my God, if you had told me this earlier, I would have my own expense bought Lot a business class ticket and sent him boss, Lot, please leave early because only after you go, I'm going to receive this blessing. Pastor is here. There are so many lots who leave the church. And that's when God blesses our churches and multiplies our churches. Amen. Hallelujah. There will be people, there are lots. I'm just I, I'm praying, God, show me the right lot, Lord. I have to tell them out. <laughs> it could be a relationship. Sometimes there are lots which God removed from your homes. It could, you could be in a relationship with the lot. Abraham was in a relationship, not the wrong way. He, his relative was lot. There are times God removes lots in our life so that the Lord can interfere and bless us abundantly. Hallelujah. Yes, it might hurt when Lot leaves. Right? There are certain herdsmen of Abraham who would have went along with Lot saying, I am going to go with Lot. Because Abraham, Lot is going to Jordan. So Abraham, you are a fool. You are going there. It is no use of being with you and working all these years. I am going to cut my relationship and I am going to go with Lot to the land of Jordan. Super, thank God. Get out. Because the word of God says, after Lot had left, my God looks at Abraham and says, you know what? Hey, your new season is coming. I'm going to bless you, man. All right? Lot is gone. He's not taken away your blessings. He's taken away all the curses. So after Lot has left, the Lord says, look up to the north, south, east, west. Oh, come on. Are you guys, are you guys receiving the word? Is it being prophetic? I'm so encouraged to preach this this morning. And the Lord says, you know what? And I will give you to many descendants. Like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go back home. Make a list of all the lots in your life. Call them, get them a ticket. <laughs> Ask them to leave. Give them a Diwali gift hamper. Give them some rasagullas. See you, bye. Many people think that when people leave, they take away the blessings. No. God removes certain people in our life because they've been blocking our blessing. They've been blocking our blessing and we don't know it. God removes them. God removes them. God removes them. And the best part is, Abraham did not go to ask God and say, you know what, God, Lot is gone. Will you bless me? He never asked. If it was us, Lord, I gave up all this, Lord. What are you going to give me? You don't have to ask, man. There's so many times, you know, people say, I've given up all this for the Lord. I've given up all the boss. He's given his life for you, man. So don't come and show off. All right? Don't talk as if the Lord is indebted for you. All of this, I've given up for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord. You don't have to ask. Abraham did not ask. But God automatically told him. I will bless you, man. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You want, you count them. They cannot be counted. And the best part is, you know what? I hate walking. You know what? I hate walking. I'm more of a wage guy. I, I hate walking. Even in gym, I don't like to use the treadmill at all. I hate walking. But from tomorrow morning, I'm going to start to walk. You know why? The Lord said, Abraham, this is what the Lord said. Go and walk through the land in every direction. For I'm giving it to you. Amen. He says, go and walk through the land in every direction. So tomorrow morning, I'm starting my walk. If anybody is joining, come and join me. All right. I'm going to walk, walk in every direction. And I'm like, Lord, I want this. I want this. Not the properties. I want I, every soul is in every direction. Lord, wherever I walk, I want people to be saved. I want people to know that they take up the Lord, receive Jesus. And I want people to start living for Christ. Every place I walk, I want revival to happen. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to walk into certain policy where people say non-vegetarians cannot come. And I pray in the name of Jesus that they will become a non-vegetarian. <laughs> but dear children of God, I think we'll have to own this up. We'll have to walk. Don't, don't, don't. I want to tell you as parents also, you know, don't give your children a very wrong teaching. It's like somehow you study and go and settle in that land. Somehow you study, you know, somehow get the visa, man. Go settle in America. Go settle in Australia. Boss, if God had to take them, let them go there. But then... Don't ever think just because they go there, they're going to be blessed. I visit so many countries, man. You should see the pathetic situation. Right? The guys wouldn't have lift a, lifted a cup at home. Right? There, they work in restaurants, washing vessels, 
they might put great postings i am in times square times square corner restaurant washing vessels will not be placed no i am not saying people should not go abroad man you should go all okay but your mindset should change that if i go there i will be blessed no don't tell your children that because there will be times they will not be able to go to certain places just because you did not go to a certain place don't think you will not be blessed thank god i didn't go there because here i'm going to be blessed hallelujah so your confidence is not in the place your confidence is god so as parents we we'll have to teach our children boss it's not about the place it's always about the presence it's always about the presence that's what david says even if i go and make my bed in hell my god will still be there hallelujah and that's what we'll have to teach our children from their childhood it's not about australia america antarctica uk ireland netherland no what no matter which land you are it could be uganda it could be nairobi it could be kenya it could be gumudi pundi it could be katihar bihar anywhere you could be but the lord will make sure you are a blessing there hallelujah that is what need to be taught to our children if you go into a dark room and you go with a candle the room is dark but the small candle can bring light to the entire room it's not about the room it's about the candle today i want to tell you you can walk into any dark place but be the candle that bring lights that bring light into people's life don't be bothered about the dark rooms man don't try to get into a room where there are already too many tube lights there are already too many tube lights you don't want to be the next tube light man you know what i mean right there are enough tube lights in a hall don't want to be the next tube light man i will be the candle only candle in the dark room i will be the light which brings light to this entire dark room man i don't want to be another tube light hallelujah so i want to encourage you this morning man have faith have confidence in god not in the place and the best part is go find who's the lord at home so last week i was in kerala kochi before i came here i was ministering in a church called blessing today all right so i was they they had a huge church in a two acre land they built a huge church so i was asking the pastor about the testimony so he said pastor few years back we had 300 people we were in a very small land so we wanted to move to this place god had showed me this place so when we wanted to move here huge amount i just paid the advance and i moved here i had six assistant pastors they took away 270 people and left he told all the people that place is far this far pastor is a fool don't go there so and when i paid the advance for this big land i had only 30 people 270 left but today hello there are 5000 plus people in this place alone amen and he's got 40 other big churches this one for this morning i want to tell you 270 lots can leave but the lots is wherever you are i'm going to bless you i like as i just like the verse i want i want i want to say it again and again and again after lot had gone i want to tell you if you're not married you're in a relationship god's removed from your life after lot had gone amen god has removed some relatives from your life after lot had gone hallelujah people whom you trusted and left you after lot had gone there are many lots which would have left the church but after those lots have gone god has multiplied church into thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands that's what god's going to bless you man this morning so don't be worried about people who leave people go blessings come your confidence is in the place not in the place but in the god who called you blessed people don't come from blessed backgrounds blessed people make every place they set foot a blessing remember this next day morning when you walk into your office you will walk in with this confidence man i am going to go into this office even if the office is new or if it's going to shut down because of me they will open another 10 companies man that's the confidence i walk in i walk into any area man i walk into this area this community is bad people think this community is not going to develop because i live here this community is going to develop amen because i walk into this college because i walk into this place because i walk into this, everywhere i set my foot i need to have this confidence because of me the lord is going to change the fate of the people living around me hallelujah